Hi everyone, this is Tina Varelli. I represent KitchenAid on QVC and I have a website. It's epicurecloud.com. You can go there for all my recipes and links to all my videos. So this is the KitchenAid 13 cup food processor with dicing kit. And I'm really excited to show you all the pieces and parts. So first I'm going to go through all the pieces and parts and then I will take you step by step on how to set up and do your dicing, your slicing, your shredding, and so on. All right. All right, so here we go. So the big wow with this food processor is the one-click operation. You're not really twisting anything, and it has a really great click-and-go lid as well. So let's start there. So this is a 13-cup bowl capacity, really, really powerful motor. Um, so the click-and-go lid just lifts up, and I love that it holds into place and um, we had some previous models where the lid would hold in place but back a little bit further and sometimes these would fall out. This is now adjusted a little bit on an angle to keep your feed tubes in place. But you can also just lift and take the lid out when you're ready to. The lid is all dishwasher safe, top rack. It has a leak resistant silicone seal. It has a wide feed tube. And it also has this medium feed tube, this smaller feed tube, and a little drizzle hole there in case you want to make mayonnaise or a vinaigrette, something you want to drizzle the oil in slowly to emulsify. Okay, so I love how just about everything stacks here inside the bowl. I said just about everything because this particular unit that we're gonna have at QVC is going to come with a bonus french fry disc and that does not fit inside. So I just keep this in like a little padded envelope and keep that in one of my cabinets. Oh, and you're also gonna get this very cool refrigerator lid that clicks on just like the lid and that's great for storing in the fridge. And if you want to, you can just kind of place your lid on top and all of that stores together neatly. The lid won't lock in when this is in place, but it does kind of nestle down in there and is quite secure. So take that lid off, take off my refrigerator lid. So in here, super excited to show you the dicing kit. We haven't had a dicing kit in quite a while and it's definitely one of my favorites. It is about a half inch dice there, maybe a little bit less than a half inch. So this is the dicing kit all packed up. I will get into more details with the dicing kit in a little bit. Um, and then check this out. This is your caddy for in bowl storage. So what I did was I just lifted up on these two black handles here. They have like little finger grips. And on there is your beautiful stainless steel fine reversing to medium shredding disc, dishwasher safe. This is your externally adjustable slicing disc. I'll talk more about how that works. These are super high quality, heavy, um, like I said, stainless steel, dishwasher safe, love that. So then in the caddy here is where it stores all your little bits and pieces. So on the top here, the all plastic black one, that's your dough blade. Flip it over. This is your metal multi-purpose blade. It's held in place with a magnet. So you just, do you see how it just kind of sucked itself into place there? This guy's really sharp, so you do want to be careful. So when you're not using it, it's great to keep it tucked away on your caddy there. This gray guy here is for cleaning out your dicing kit. Over here, this and this is your two part adapter. You're gonna use this quite often. So these guys, this guy just goes on top and it just sets on there and that forms your adapter. So that's awesome. Let me show you how it all goes back in as well. 
So you have your multi-purpose blade already on the bottom. Your adapter in a skinny part just clicks in there. The bigger part of your adapter goes upside down and you'll see there's like little compartments and finger holes for grabbing them out. Then your dough blade just snaps in here. So then this whole piece has, do you see that little kind of in, indentation there on either side? The inside of your bowl also has those indentations and that's gonna slide in. Oh wait, I forgot to tell you. So <laughs> the bowl is BPA free dishwasher safe top rack. And you wanna kinda keep it straight up and down when it's in the dishwasher. This has a really neat sealed coupler system, more like a blender. Remember when food processors had that kind of tube and if you filled it too high, food could kinda overflow like Niagara Falls and make a big mess in your kitchen. So this one has a sealed coupler system, makes it really great for pureeing liquidy items. I'm gonna show you that. And also you can do this really neat cleaning trick. So that just snaps back on the base. So again, these little notches are gonna fit these little ribs down here. So if you ever went to put it in and it wasn't going in, just give it a spin until it sets down and those grooves, you know, catch those ribs there. Okay, so then the externally adjustable slicing disc, see how it has this part that extends on the bottom, that's gonna nestle first right into where your dough blade is. So you always wanna put that one first. Next, you want to do your um, shredding disc. And notice they have these handy little finger holds here um, so you don't have to get your fingers next to the sharp parts of the blade. Pop that in. Next, we have our dicing kit. And the top of the dicing kit has a little kind of a picture on it and these larger finger holds. The bottom of the dicing kit has these small finger holds and it kind of reminds me of like a goofy face. Um, and the face part is always gonna go, the mouth part of the face is always gonna go under where the feed tube is. So if you have your machine like this, I work mine backwards so that I can show you that's gonna drop down right along where this kind of black bar is in the back, or for you, might be in the front. Um, so that's just gonna drop into place here. If you ever have trouble dropping this into place here, this has like a larger notch here, and there's a little um, kind of a bump here that those are gonna fit into. So if it doesn't just drop down for you, Look for that little piece and give that a whirl. Okay, let's put on our lid, goes on the top, our refrigerator lid, and then we can nestle our lid right on top and it kind of presses down inside. So there you go. This is the base here. Um, this particular color is contour silver and you're gonna have a low speed, a high speed, and then your pulsing speed. And I will, plug it in and we'll get it working and show you all the ins and the outs. Okay, I'll join you back here in a second and I'm gonna show you how to start with dicing. Okay, here we are and let's get set up for dicing. So you just want to open up your snap and go lid there, take out your dicing kit, and then we just want to take out the whole caddy. I take these discs off just for safety as I'm handling the caddy. So you're going to need the two parts of your adapter. So you just want to grab those and then I pop my discs back on so everything is nice and neat. All right, so put your adapter together. You just put the kind of skinny piece on and then kind of twirl that in. It doesn't really lock or click or anything. It's just seated in there. So then your dicing kit here, and let me show you, I'll show you when it's in the machine. You can take it apart when it's outside the machine, but I kind of like to do it inside the machine because the machine holds it for me and I feel like that's a little bit, you know, safer for me, especially dealing with sharp blades. All right, so put that in. And then to open it up, you can twist and open. 
So this is the top part of the lid. Then you're gonna see there is a blade inside and here is the bottom part of the lid. And let me also show you how to go about cleaning when the time comes. So when you want to clean, you have this neat little cleaning tool. It has these two little pegs that fit into holes and then you can press the food through. Okay, so let me show you how to reset it up just in case um, your pieces are apart. So you want the bottom, the little handles pointing downward. So make sure that's in place. Remember the little notch that I told you about before? There's a little bump out of the same, um, same shape. The blade has the words KitchenAid and Dicing Blade printed on the top side. So you want to make sure the words are facing upward. And then we're gonna put on the top part of the lid. Remember the top part has the picture and the bigger handles. And I'm not gonna tell anyone if you take a little, you know, permanent marker and put a little top on there. I think that's totally fine. Okay, so then you want to put your lid on, slide it down and then lock it into place. So I'm putting it on, sliding it right into place and then put your lid on the top. If for some reason your lid does not snap and close, then the dicing kit's not seated properly. Okay, are we ready to dice? Now pay attention because it happens so quickly. I love, love, love this, especially when you wanna make chopped salads, um, you know, Thanksgiving, if you make stuffing, chopping all those onions and celery, it's awesome. All right, here's low speed. And when I work, I like to keep a cutting board and knife nearby, because sometimes you trim things to fit. So for dicing, we're only going to use the medium feed tube or that small feed tube because the hole for dicing is made the same size as that. We're not going to use the wide feed tube. And basically all you do is make sure that the diameter of your fruit or vegetable is going to fit that feed tube. So that quickly, in case you missed it, so quick and easy. Now you can turn it off either by hitting the same button that was on or using that pulse off lever there. A neat thing, because we don't have to twist and adjust all the time, is you can kind of take it off and just kind of shake your ingredients down because sometimes they like to kind of build up on one side of the unit. But here we have those beautiful, beautiful diced um, cucumbers. And let me show you how to go ahead and clean the disc out. I discovered this, and this was a helpful tip for me. So turn to uh, the left, turn to your left, or we're going clockwise to kind of release it. And the whole unit wants to come out together, just press on that silver button and that helps to drop down and separate it. So take that to the side, carefully holding from the middle your um, slicing part of the dicing kit. Now you see how there's some food stuck there in the grid. That is where your clean out tool comes into play. So you just want to press down and now the food is cleaned out. I'm gonna put that over here. That's ready to go into the dishwasher. And look at these beautifully diced cucumbers. So lovely. Uh, I could not do it that quickly with a knife. And I love the cucumbers as a base for all kinds of chopped salad. I have a yummy autumn chopped salad on my website that I love to make um, in the fall, especially in Thanksgiving. Okay, so I'm gonna clean this up and get ready to show you slicing. So stay tuned. Okay, so we're ready to slice now. To set it up, you just need your two-part adapter. Pop that in. Remember, it doesn't really click or lock or anything. It just sets in there. I'm going to take my caddy, take off my shredding disc, and this is the externally adjustable slicing disc, and they're all labeled there on the top side. So you just set that in, give it a spin, um, you know, if it's not seated quite properly. Put aside your caddy there, 
put that disc on so we're all safe and ready to go. So I wanted to show you what I mean by externally adjustable. Up here is a silver knob and you probably can't see it, but when you get yours at home up close here, you're going to see numbers starting with zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. Do you see how this black piece kind of goes up and down? So that is what adjusts the slicing. So you don't have to keep stopping and twisting something on the disc to get whatever thickness that you want. And you're going to get really even um, slices from this. So put your lid back on. I'm going to go for, let's do um, thin and then we'll do thicker and then I can show you how they look different. So for this one, you can actually use the really wide part of the feed tube. And let me show you how that works. Um, uh, let's see. So I'm going to trim a piece of squash here and pop him in and lay him down on its side. And we're gonna make some planks. Whenever you're using that wide feed tube, it needs to be pushed in to where it says max here on the top because there's um, a safety mechanism here. We wouldn't want this to turn on you know, while your hand is there. So this silver piece here has to engage with this black piece in the back. As long as it's down past that max line, you're good to go. So then you just turn it on and you really don't need to push at all. But there you can see we got some beautiful thin squash slices there. Um, let's say I wanted to slice rounds of squash, open it up, place it in, put it down, and turn it on. So there we have beautiful poker chips of squash. Let me show you what they look like. And it's totally normal to have a couple little pieces up at the top here. Those are just your snacks for later. So this was on one of the thinnest settings and you can see the beautiful even slices that you're gonna get. This is really great when you're making gratins or ratatouille and you want it to cook nice and evenly. So pretty, you can just about see through them. And then here we have those nice thin slices. If you made these thicker, that would be perfect for going on the grill or even making um, like a ribbon salad or even, you know, like a vegetable lasagna. You could do that. Okay, let's put this back together here and I'll show you slicing a couple more things. Let's show one of the thicker cuts this time. And what I do often is I just check and see, you know, if it's going to fit in or if it's going to need trimming. So that's going to fit in just fine. So I'm going to turn that on. Now, when you're slicing, you can choose the low speed or the high speed depending on how firm your foods are. I used low for the squash because it's soft. I'm gonna use low for the cucumber. Later when I slice a carrot, I'm gonna give it a little bit more power and use that high speed. So here we go. You know, I'm barely you know, guiding it down in. You don't want to really press hard or it's going to distort your slices. Okay, so these are the thicker cucumber slices. They look like poker chips here. These would be great for like your dipping in a salad, you know, a little dips for your charcuterie board, your hummus. So beautiful thicker slices there. If you like to make apple type desserts, especially, you know, end of summer, fall, during apple season. I just like to kind of cut the cheeks off the apples and then cut off those two little small pieces and all you have left is the core. Let's say for my pie, I want kind of a medium thickness. I'm gonna turn that on, pop those guys. Oops, forgot to put my blade in. <laughs> Here we go. All right, I'm with it. Here we go, okay. Put your blade in, put in your little apple pieces. 
and so quickly you can go ahead and slice your apple for your pies, your tarts, your cobblers. So easy, beautiful, beautiful, even apple slices mean that your pie is going to turn out beautifully because they're cut evenly. Nice, even apple slices. And finally, let's put that disc back in. We don't wanna make that mistake again. So this time we're going to um, slice carrot, maybe for a salad. I wanna see if it's gonna fit in that small feed tube. I like to use whatever feed tube holds the vegetable upright the best because then it's not gonna you know go crooked and then you're gonna get wonky slices. So I'm gonna turn this on high and then I'm gonna pop in the carrot. I love that. It's like one of those wood chippers out there when when um, people are doing tree work. So the bottom here is a little fat. I'm gonna cut him off, use him in the medium feed tube and just use the narrow part here. You have your slicing done. And look at all that beautiful prep work done so much more quickly than I could do by hand. So here you go, all your yummy veggies. So that is the slicing disc. Remember that can go in the top rack of your dishwasher. Join me in a second and I'm gonna show you how to use the very cool french fry disc that comes with this QVC packup. Okay, I just realized I had a terrible glare here on my unit, so I put out some curtains, so hopefully you can see everything a little better. There is a little ray of sunshine coming through here. Okay, so now we are going to set up for our french fry blade. So put in your adapter again. Take your french fry disc, pop it on. Sometimes you just need to give it a little spin to get it set into place. Pop on your lid. And I like to use the wide feed tube. I'm going to make some fries here with these potatoes. So all you need to do is make sure that your potato is going to fit in there. If it's a little tight like this one, you just take a little sliver off and then it fits in great. Okay, so I'm going to turn on my unit here. Oh, and we have to have Remember this in place, I almost forgot there, in place down to that max line here as that safety precaution so your hands don't get in laid there. But let's do a couple of these and then I'll open up and show you. They make really fun like smile fries. Think of like a steak fry shape. Um, you can make apple fries, you can make zucchini fries, so much fun. Um, you can make like zucchini dippers to have on your crudite platter. Um, you know, beyond french fries, there's lots and lots that you can do. Let me trim that a little bit more. Are you gonna fit him? There we go. All right, pop him in. And let's open it up and see. So use those finger holds again to take out your disc and look at the fun shapes you get from your fries here. Give them a little shake there to separate them. And look, I love them. They're little smile fries. So that is super fun, whether you want to bake your fries or pop them in your fryer or your air fryer would be awesome. But what a fun way to cut your own cute little french fries. So that is the bonus french fry disc that comes with this unit. Um, let me clean this up, come on back, and I'll show you how the shredding works. All right, let's get ready to shred it up here. So again, your two-part adapter goes in. And then we have our awesome shredding disc here. So one side is fine shred, the other side is a medium shred. So I'm just going to put that into place here and whichever shred you want, you just want that facing up. So pop your lid on, close it up. 
So I'm gonna shred some cheese on a medium shred and then I'll switch and show you some squash on the smaller shred. So I like to buy these like rectangular pieces of cheese and I just cut them in the middle so that I have these square pieces and those usually fit down really well. So I'm going to turn on my unit here and you want your cheese to be cold. It just helps it not kind of rub onto the disc, so I just took these out of the refrigerator. You don't need to freeze them. Okay, so just pop in your cheese. Just guiding it. I'm not pressing at all. You can see the cheese. If it kind of bulks up on one side, give it a little shake. I'm using high speed here. I'm just going to put my cheese in again. Again, like barely touching it. And totally normal if you get a couple little crumbly cheese bits, if you get a couple pieces in here, all totally normal. And look at the beautiful fluffy results you get there with that cheese. I love to shred my own cheese because the cheese that you buy pre-shredded in the bags has anti-caking agents added to it um, so that the they don't stick together, but it also dries out the cheese. So you're really not gonna get the smoothest, creamiest results with your recipes. This time I'm gonna turn over and we're gonna do that finer shred. All right, pop your lid on. There we go, click and go. So with the shredding, you can use that medium feed tube you could use a small feed tube if you wanted to do carrots. You can also use that wide feed tube. Let's say I wanted to cut this squash in half, put the two pieces down in there side by side. As long as this goes down to that max line, we should be good to go. So if it turns on, we're good to go. I'm gonna use low speed because these um, squash are softer. So just gentle, gentle hardly pressing. Oh, wait till you see how fine that is. So nice. Again, totally normal to have a couple pieces up there. That's just fine. Take your adapter out and look at the beautiful shred. That would be beautiful in salads, in stir fries, to make a fritter. How about some little frittatas with that beautiful squash? They're like beautiful little strings. Okay, now that I've made a real mess here, I'm gonna clean that up and I have two more things to show you. I'm gonna show you the multi-purpose blade. We're gonna make homemade uh, pizza sauce and then we're gonna make pizza dough. Oh, and I forgot one more thing, three more things to show you. I'm gonna show you the cleaning trick. Oh, and let me show you this too. So much to show you. If say you made like a whole salad here and you wanted to just pop it in the fridge, fridge, that's where you can pop on your refrigerator lid and off you go to store that in the fridge. So just wanted to point out some great uses for this awesome refrigerator lid. All right, I'll be back as soon as I clean this up. All right, now we're ready to use that metal multi-purpose blade to do some pureeing. It's great for chopping, pureeing, um, all sorts of things. So in the bottom of your caddy, it's held in by a magnet. So I just hold on to the handle and just pull that out. Remember it's sharp, so be careful with that. Your two-part adapter goes in and then that just kind of slides down and nestles down at the bottom of the bowl. So the first thing I want to do when making my pizza sauce is I want to mince up some garlic and some parsley. So this is a neat tip when using your food processor. You can turn it on and then when you drop the garlic in, it's gonna hit that blade and bounce around and get minced up and kind of get a head start as to getting chopped. This is great for herbs as well. You just wanna make sure they're not wet or they're gonna get stuck on the side of the bowl. So just drop down your herbs get them all minced in there to start. Okay, I can hit high speed there. 
You also have that pulsing feature over here, which is an even higher speed. You can even hold that down for a few seconds. Okay, open up your snap and go lid. So here I have some diced tomatoes from a can. This is two cans. Um, remember, if you want the recipe, I'll post a link to it below. And all my recipes are on my website, epicuri, E-P-I-C-U-R-I, cloud.com. Um, so that's two cans. And I think they were actually fire roasted because that's what they had on sale. So this is two cans of tomato paste. This is actually a double recipe. Because I have that capacity, I can make a large batch there and then I could always freeze it or have a pizza party. So a little bit of Italian seasoning blend, one of my favorite blends, and just a little pinch of sugar. So snap and go that lid. Now, when you're pureeing anything liquidy, and I don't know if you can see it here, but there is a little marking that says max. It's your max fill line. So you can fill you know, your liquids up to the top and because we have this leak resistant seal and that sealed coupler in the bottom, you know, we should be good with leakage. But you don't wanna go above that because up here there are holes where liquids could come out. Okay, so I'm gonna turn this on low speed there. So you could use low speed, you could use high speed, or if you wanted a little bit more control, let's say you wanted it to be kind of a chunky sauce, you can just use that pulsing motion with your pulse blade there. So really you have all the controls and these levers are super easy to press. And you turn it off by pressing again or pressing the pulse off button. Oh, it smells like fresh pizza. Oh, so good. Who knew it was so easy to make. So I'm going to show you the cleaning trick now, but first I need to pour this out. So put this aside. We'll give a little wipe of this top here that I made a mess with. I'm going to put this back in, and of course you would scrape that better at home because you don't want to waste any of that yummy goodness. So now this is all goopy and messy. So I could take it to the sink and wash it. I could put it in the top rack of the dishwasher, but because we have that sealed coupler and that leak resistant seal, I can put in water all the way up to that max fill line. I have somewhere between six and seven cups here. So just put in water. If I wasn't making a video, I would just take it over to the sink to fill it up. Um, a couple drops of soap, if you like, and pop your lid on. Make sure that seal, seal is really engaged there. And I'm just going to turn it on, first on low, and then you can go high. And you can see it's going above that leak resistant seal really cool down all those little bits and pieces and then when I turn it off you can see how it really nicely rinsed clean the bowl so I could take it over to the sink dump it out and then just give it a quick rinse since I had some soap in there and then I'm good to go for my next recipe. So just a quick and easy kind of clean in between. Again, rinse out your soapy suds, give it a little dry, and then you're ready to go. So I'm gonna do that now, and then we're gonna make our pizza dough to go with our pizza sauce. So come on right back. Okay, here we go. Let's make some pizza dough. So the last piece in our caddy here is that black um, dough blade. Again, put in your adapter, our best friend there, and your dough blade. Just make sure it sits, you know, as close to the bottom there as it goes. So when I make my doughs, I always start with my dry ingredients in the bowl. So I have my flour, um, a little bit of salt, just going to dump that in. And then 
I use um, instant yeast or rapid rise and you don't need to bloom it. So that can just go in as well. And then I'm just going to kind of mix together my dry ingredients there for a second. And then here I have my liquid, um, which is water and just a little bit of oil. Um, and again, this recipe you can get on my website. And usually when I'm making doughs, I have a little bit of extra water on hand and sometimes a little bit of extra flour, you know, depending on what flour you're using, what brand, what protein content it has, the humidity in the air can all kind of make the water amounts vary a little bit. So I like to never add all the liquid at once. You want to kind of let the dough work its magic and let it, you know, absorb the liquid. So I'm going to put that on low speed and I'm just going to take out my feed tubes here so I can pour right through the top. So I'm just going to kind of trickle it in, uh, maybe about a third of the amount and just kind of let it do its work. So where the metal multi-purpose blade had more of a chopping motion and I use that when I want to cut in with doughs like um, biscuits with um, pie crust. I like that metal multi-purpose blade. The dough blade is all about rolling and you can see if you were looking in here where I am that it's rolling little dough balls that are going to combine to make a larger dough ball and kind of pull that flour down from the side. So you just want to let it work a little bit. You don't want to inundate it with water because you might end up with too wet of a dough and then you have to add flour and then you might need to add more water. So it's better just to take your time a little bit there. So this is great for all your yeast doughs, whether you're making yeast rolls, a pizza dough, um, cinnamon swirl bread, white bread, you know, you can make all those kinds of doughs easily. If your dough, this has two and a quarter cups of flour, if your dough has a lot more flour, still totally workable, you might need to get in there with the spatula, you know, nudge it around a little bit as well. So I'm just going to add some more here. Kind of see where we are. You can see, you know, it just needs to pull in a little bit more flour here. And do not be afraid. Let me show you. Do not be afraid to get in there and touch with your hand. You know, you don't want the dough to be crazy sticky. You want to see if it's holding together. And really, some of that is best done by actually feeling it. So a little bit more water there to kind of compensate for the dry around the edge. I'm going to just let that go there a little bit. See if it's starting to pull in some of those little dough balls. I want to feel it, see what kind of texture. I don't want to end up with like a soupy dough. All right, I'm just going to give a little scrape, loosen everything up here, and I think we're going to use all the water. So just let it go, trickle in a little bit more. Yep. It's doing a nice job. I can see it kneading. I can see that it's not really, you know, sticking to the side of the bowl. Doing a really nice job. I do have some additional water here if I think that I need it, but I prefer to kind of just let it go. I'm totally fine with, um, you know, some little blobs in there. I think I like that texture there. It is just the tiniest bit tacky. I'm going to take that dough blade out and I'm just going to kind of have it pick up the rest of those little pieces there. So I can just kind of squish that in by hand. It's yummy like textural therapy there. So that is so so nice. If you wanted to you could kind of clean that out a little bit 
rub a little oil in and you could let your dough rise right into this bowl. You could pop on your lid. And the beauty of the straight-sided container is when you say let the dough rise till double, you'll actually see it with a, a bowl that has um, rounded sides. It's kind of hard to tell when it's risen till double. So this is a nice straight-sided container for actually rising your dough in there. But Oh, look, looks like a bagel or a donut. Okay. All right, so that is fun. So please let me know if you have any questions, if you get stuck. Um, if you wanna see how to pack it up, I showed you that at the beginning. Um, any kind of recipes, check out my website. Um, if I don't have something that you're looking for, I can certainly help to direct you in the right direction. But that's it. I hope you enjoy your food processor, really get the most out of it, let it be that helping hand um, to do some of that prep work for you because it's really capable of a lot of things and we barely touch the surface. So thank you so much for spending your time with me. Take care.